In this video, you will learn about populations, samples, and sample size. Statistics studies groups of people, objects, or data measurements and produces summarizing information on the group. The groups are usually not all of the possible people, objects, or data measurements. The groups are called samples. All the possible people, objects, or data measurements under consideration are called the population. A population is the complete group or set of elements, objects, observations, or people. Parameters are measurements of a population. A sample is a subgroup or subset of the population. A sample usually consists of at least five or more observations, objects, people, or measurements. Statistics are the measurements of the sample. Measuring whole populations is often not possible. Here we have a artificially constructed population of 100 marbles. This is a randomly selected sample of 11 from the population of 100 marbles. The sample size is 11. This is a sample of 14 marbles selected from the population of 100 marbles. A sample can give us an idea of what the population of marbles looks like, even though we are not seeing all 100 marbles anymore. However, this will only work if the sample is a good random sample from the population. This is a sample of 10 marbles from the population. This is not a good random sample. This would give one the impression that all of the marbles might indeed be dark blue in color. Good random samples are necessary to draw conclusions about larger populations. The process of selecting good random samples is usually a part of research design or design of the survey or other instrument that's being used to gather the data. Much of the, these topics go beyond the scope of this particular course. This course will focus more on the mechanics of making particular statistical calculations. But whenever one is looking at a sample, one of the first questions a statistician will ask is, whether or not the sample is a good random sample from the population that the person was trying to characterize. If that sample isn't a good random sample from the population, then nothing can really be said about what will happen in the larger population. This is a key first step to good research and good studies. For the purposes of demonstrating how to set up a function in Google Sheets, I've split the marbles up into nine sets of marbles. They are pseudo or semi-random sets. The, that group there has 13 marbles, nine, nine, 13 in this one, 11, 12, 10, 14, and finally 9 marbles in this one. I'll use these numbers to demonstrate how to set up uh, a function in Google Sheets. As an introduction to using Google Sheets and functions in Google Sheets, I'll open up Google Sheets from the app icon. I'll just tap on the Sheets icon. And at the bottom right corner, you'll see a plus sign. If you tap on the plus sign, you'll see New Spreadsheet, the second item. I'll tap on New Spreadsheet, and I'll get a new spreadsheet. 
I can use my fingers to zoom in so I can see a little better what I'm doing. And you'll see that the spreadsheet consists of letters across the top. Those are column letters, A, B, C, D, E. And row numbers on the left side running down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The first row is usually used for labels. In this case, I'll tap my finger on column A, row 1. That's the cell A1. And I'll go to the bottom of my screen and tap on Enter Text or Formula. And I'll enter number of marbles per set. To enter that, I'll press the green check to the right side, and that will enter that value. To enter the number in the first set of marbles, I will tap my finger on A2, tap at the bottom, enter the number 13, and again press the green check. In A3, I tap on A3, tap at the bottom, enter 9. On this keyboard, there is a shortcut. At the far right side, bottom corner, bottom right, is a little enter key, a little left facing arrow. If I tap on that, it'll enter the number and go to the next cell automatically. You'll notice that my keyboard has also changed to just show me numbers to make it easier to enter numbers. If I needed to go back to the alpha keyboard, there's an AA circle on the right side that will get me back to a full alpha keyboard. I've entered all nine sets, the number of marbles in each of the nine sets. In this case, I know that the number of numbers, my sample size, is uh, nine. I can count that. But there are times when we need to count much larger sets of numbers or datas or measurements. And so we'll use this as a way to introduce functions and how to enter functions into spreadsheets. Now the sample size function is the count function in spreadsheets. Spreadsheets use count to count the number of numbers, and that is the sample size. Count and sample size are the same thing. There are a couple ways to enter functions in spreadsheets. On the left side, to the left of enter text or formula, is an FX. If I tap on the FX, list of function categories will appear. I can scroll down, tap on statistical, and then scroll down to the count function. The count function counts the number of numeric values in a data set. If I tap on the count function, the spreadsheet will enter the function into the cell that I'm currently in, A12. The green FX is lit up, which tells me that I'm entering a function. And the cursor is blinking between two parentheses. Between those two parentheses, I put the range in which the data occurs on the spreadsheet using the address system of a spreadsheet. The easy way to do this, or one of the ways to do this, is to tap on A2 and then tap in the middle of A2 and pull your finger down, drag your finger down. And this has entered A2 to A10. Now I can press the green check mark, and it will tell me that there are nine values between A2 and A10, including A2 and A10. Another way to enter a, a function is to manually type it. On the left side, uh, just below the FX, is an equal sign. I press equals, and I can type the word count. I can type open parenthesis, A2, full colon, a 10, close parenthesis, and again press the check to get a 9 entered in. The count function tells us to sample size n. Later we'll learn other functions. They are all entered the same way, either using the fx symbol or by manually typing them, remembering that the first character in any function is the equal sign. The equal sign tells the spreadsheet that you're about to give it a function.